skill for calves only and you're doing it by hand and you're handling it, as Tommy will tell you, it's just as easy to type in the number and do it because you're getting it close. Where we see that these make a massive difference is when you start doing it through growing up to finishing, the speed of the animal through the crush and then the other ability of that is you'll be able to weigh them in 10 seconds coming through the crush. You're not having to like fadge it around with their ear. The stress that it puts on the animal when you start doing that. We've got one farm who did a bit of research into it. He reckoned before he was using EID and, and breeder, he was probably taking, losing 48 to 20, 72 hours of growth from putting him through a weigh. He reckons he's got it down to 24 hours of like slight setback. And he reckons it's now under that, like it's become negligible. And so, and the reason for that is he's done it's not just the EID, like he's done some stuff in the handling and making them walk better, but he can just beep as it goes through, gets a weight, it's out within three seconds. I and have this idea to put um, sheep killing tags in. Yeah. So instead of a, um, what are four quid or something, EID, something like that? I need your mug. Two pounds fifty, are they? I'm getting them from the. No, the sheep ones, are, sheep ones are a bit cheaper now, so, but you should be able to pick up these. I mean, no, you, you can definitely get them for cheaper than that anyway. Like, you can get them for under two quid for some of these tags to be able to stick them in. And so... Yeah. Yeah. So, so, but these aren't cheap, right? Like, these are 650 odd quid. Um, when you go through it. These here, like once you use the breeder voucher that goes with it, you'll pick them up for 350 quid. Now, Tommy doesn't need it at the moment because he's got his old one here. And you can just type it in, obviously. But I think what we're seeing now is that... Um, 300 pounds with a discount. There you go. Anyway, but... And so... And these are... All they are is weight and... <laughs> um, <laughs> and they do, do, do hook up to here. So I think... Just when we start thinking about weighing though, I think some of the things that, um, if you haven't done the weighing on the app first, there's obviously a few different ways you can get in. So one of the ones is QuickWay, which is, I think that's how you use it, don't you the most? And so you can just tap to search, um, or you can at some point scan. So if you do have the EID, the first time you do it and you scan that, you'll see it'll pop up with no match. And so then you do, you tap to search and you'll search for an animal, stick it in, it'll match the EID. Can you, if we've already got EIDs on a spreadsheet? We can speak to Gabby, can she can help you upload them. Yep, absolutely. So you can do it in one fell one whole yeah, whole yeah, whole 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 yeah, it's okay. So, but when you're inducting animals quite often from then on, you have to do it that first time yeah. and then it's in for everything thereafter. So. Yeah. What, what we do see is a lot of people have like a piece of poly pipe there, which is what I'd call it, and they just put it on auto read. And then as soon as it comes in, it gets near enough to the ear that they don't even have to handle it. So, and there's just a few things that you can do with tricks with that where you don't, because you can just set it up to auto read to be able to make stuff easier. So that will then pull the weight directly through from the scale. And so actually, I'll shove one on there. Hopefully it'll stabilize. And so the benefit of that is, again, it's completely hands-free. So you're not having to tap it up. You could stick your little phone cradle there. The only time you should be really touching in the breeder app is if you're wanting to log a medicine. Or, and I'll, I'll pick one of your animals, but I won't save it, mate, because otherwise the performance has gone to shit. So, but, um, so the only time you should be touching it is your alert. So again, a lot of calf rearers are using the alerts now where you can remind yourself when you've got a course so in two or three days time, you can push that plus alert and it will then remind you that you, it'll give you a push notification on your phone in three days time saying, don't forget to give this one second dose of Draxon. So all of that sort of stuff is stuff that suddenly becomes quite beneficial. So, but we'll, um, we may as well weigh some and we'll see how the daily live weight gains are going rather than the fake ones on some of this sort of stuff. So now obviously that one's a fake animal. So I'm just gonna reset, oh, I'm just going back to that one, pop back into the active one. Um, so I'm just going to reset that record, which I'm sure everyone knows how to do already, but it deletes and clears that out and you can start again from scratch. So all for him. So Tommy, do you want to shove one in or we'll shove a few in. 
so I'm not going to need the EID because these ones haven't had a tag, but... Give you that then. On the tag. Right. Now I need my glasses to be able to read the bloody tag. What is it? <laughs> Two a six four eight four. So there you go. So that's now that's pulled up that animal. We can see actually that the daily live weight gain. Tommy, you should be listening to this. Daily live weight gain is 1.93, that one. So they have picked up on this feed, so good timing. <laughs> so, and, but the other big thing here is that, which does start to tell him he's doing a good job is, and a lot of people do this, is we have the change in daily live weight gain. So when you're looking at it, the first one is daily live weight gain, the second one is change in daily live weight gain. So you can see this one is now doing 1.93, but it's gone up, increased, by 1.46, so it was only doing half a kilogram a day. And since he's changed his feed, you know, good timing to rock up. <laughs> we'll claim the credit for getting you down here, but like apart from that. <laughs> but you can see the increase, of, <laughs> increase in daily live weight gain. All the, we won't weigh anymore now, but like. <laughs> but yeah, so. So do you want to take that one out and we'll um, grab another one. So if you were using EID now, um, you w again, you wouldn't have to touch your phone. You just scan the next EID and it automatically goes on to the next one. So again, all hands free. Um, yeah, we're all going to have to, I think there's some stuff I'll talk about technically on the EID readers if you are using them. Because we're starting to get information from DEFRA now on how they're going to use it in future. But I'll talk about it in a sec. So you can see that's already gone on to the next animal, 99.15. What is it? 3562. So again, 1.5 kilograms, it's gone up by a kilo a day. So these are all heading in the right direction now compared to where they were. So, um, so a few things you can then do if it was looking ill or lame, you could add an alert, obviously, as it goes through, um, which will give Tommy an alert in his phone. We also um, have in here the ability to add a tag. So if you want to generate a list at the end of ones like lost tags or anything like that, you can do that as you're going through. I'll just cross that off because we don't need that. Um, if you wanted to log a medicine because it's ill, you can log a medicine directly while it's in crush mode. From your, so Gabby will talk about the medicine cabinet and that in a second about how you do that, but you can administer directly from your cabinet here um, for that animal. Now the thing, so that one's going to do that and then you pause and you can see all of your animals here, how they've done. Average daily live weight gain of these two is 1.72. Um, and so you've got that session and we can then save that session there now. Um, and immediately you could view all your animals. Now if you're dose batching these, that's a good time to be able to come in here and click select all and then you can log medicines across all of them. So, you know, only really that logging the one is if you want to give it a jab of uh, any sort of antibiotic, but if you're giving them all a vaccine, do that at the end. It's a much better way to do it in terms of what you're doing. So one of the other things that I'd say then with, um, once that's all saved, we can let that one out, mate, so we don't stress it out. So, um, So then once you've got to sort of that first quick way and got the hang of the quick way, when we save those animals, we'll then start to run growth algorithms on those. So we'll start to see the predicted weights that will come through. So next day we'll start to see the predictions. When you've got your animal list here, some of you may know this, but you've got your blue green. The greens are the ones which are, we take your farm benchmark, we look at your historical performance and it tells you what's top percentage. So the green ones are in the top 15% of your historic farm performance and the red ones are in your bottom 15%. So if we start to scroll down here, you can immediately start to see which animals aren't good, right? And you've got problems with, you should be looking at, and to be honest, if they stay like that, get rid of them, right? Because they're not making any money at that point. And, you know, to constantly improve your herd, all of that stuff goes through. How many weigh in there before you start building that? So we'll start a growth algorithm after one weighing, but then it's based on sort of everyone on breeder in terms of the performance. But after two, we start to like tailor it to that individual animal. Yeah. 
and by the time you're at three, it gets pretty accurate for six to eight weeks out. So, and you know, we're seeing that, we're constantly updating it, something called machine learning, the more data we get in, the more stuff we get better at predicting that. So, so that stuff goes on. Like um, one of the other things I'd say on weighing now is if you click on manage your weigh sessions, there's, you can also set up template sessions. So there's a few reasons that people might do this. So it might be that you're inducting a group of animals. Uh, we do see it a lot when you're drawing animals for sale um, where you might actually set up drafts. So what this lets you do is you can set up a draft. You can draft it into a location if you want to. Um, so you know, under here, we've got a couple of locations that you could set up and you can set a condition. So it might be anything over zero weight is something I'm automatically drafting everything. Or a lot of people when they're drawing cattle, it might be anything over 550 or 600 automatically gets put into the weigh weight. So you can add in, I'll do zero. Um, you can add two drafts. You can actually add up to six drafts. So if you are wanting to sort cattle, it's a way for you to sort that automatically, get them into the right pen or field, get them into the right group as you're setting up the thing. And so and I'll just do this one, do another location. So you can see now down the bottom here, I've got my drawing. Uh, I've already selected this animal. I'm gonna put in a weight of 80 kilograms. Again, not gonna save that one. You can see that my auto drafting's already drafted it into that pen. If you then look at it and say you wanna take it out, you can manually override it, obviously, and stick it into the other one. But it keeps a running tally of that drawing. So especially for those guys who are doing fat cattle, really good for drawing cattle. You can see how many you've got for a truckload as you're going through. Can you set a draft to be uh, on growth mode? So at the moment, so if you come into the draft settings here um, and the conditions, uh, sorry, we've got draft three. You can do at the moment, we can do on weight, sex and days on farm. So they're the sort of auto draft. We haven't done it yet on growth rate, but you can obviously read it and then manually select them in and out if you want to and stuff like that. So with cows, and so say for example, how, how often would you recommend laying them then? Because you're handling them a lot more, like, and doing those sort of things, we recommend that within four weeks you do it. There's like... So on arrival, and then... On arrival, four weeks, you, yeah. and then try and do like four weeks weaning and then sort of as yeah. they go out. You definitely don't need to be doing it every week, in fact, because yeah. you don't want to be handling them that yeah. much. We were weighing Yeah, so well, you can use the growth predictor within here to actually not have to weigh them every time because you'll start to see the animals that are hitting 80 kilograms. Yeah. And if you've done those couple of weighings up before, you'll have pretty accurate, look at your growth predictor and then weigh them all as a batch at a time. So, so. Daily live weight gain. Uh, so with now that you're on this stuff, we'd expect up to weaning, you know, between 800 and 1.2. Yeah. Like you should. So now you you've got some compensatory growth going through on some of those, definitely. But but you're at 1.5 for those now that you've got them growing. But they were doing half a kilo a day before, so. Yeah, it's still like it's a much better pickup, like. We'll see post weaning, we'll see people doing 1.4, 1.5 as they kick on. So yeah. it's, it's just getting that diet right and measuring and you know, seeing where the bottom is. I think if you're starting to see a lot below 700 to 800 grams a day, daily live weight gain, yeah. get us back in, get Luke back in, let's have a chat because you would be expecting to see a much better on than, than yeah. that. Yeah. Technical question, going back to your drawing fat cattle, if um, I'm weighing, and uh, I'm draining at the same time. Yep. Would I record that as a tag then? Uh, so if you're drawing specifically, say you're sending off to Dumbier and you're drawing them yeah. up through breeder. Something comes in, it's 700 kilos. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's 700 kilos, it's you'd have an, quite fit. I could squeeze a few It's not quite fit, so you'd tap it out of that group and leave it in the pen it was in. So. Could I put a comment on there and put R3 on it? Yeah, you can definitely add a tag and a comment no, to that no, weigh tag. session. Yeah, and the tag is a good one to say nearly fat. Yeah, um, and so you've got that, so you can go back and have a look at them and, yeah. and see that. If it's one that you want to, like we have some people who then sort of draft them off into different pens on the nearly ready versus the not nearly ready, but you obviously don't, physically you don't want to be doing that too much because it disrupts the herd mentality yeah. and stuff like that. So. Um, and you can see actually all of those things in the book. Yeah. 
Yeah. We're gonna, it's paper specifically for you, Rob. <laughs> so but there is a paper book that goes with it. So one of the things I would say, especially if you're inducting, the first thing before you start, as you're weighing, you can scan the passport as you're weighing them. But we'd highly suggest you don't do that because it's fidgety looking for a thing. The animal ends up in the crate too far long. Like usually what we'd suggest is when animals come on farm, if you're doing your movements through breeder, which Gabby will show you, you scan all your passports on first. So once you come to weighing, it'll be able to, they'll be there ready to match up EIDs or get the data in day one. It might be you let all settle down for a couple of days. So then they're all on BCMS anyway, as they go through. Um, just a couple of other things which are then in the, in the weigh session. So if I go, I've, sort of, I've gone quick way. I'll go back to one of the active sessions. If you build up too many active sessions, it's a good idea to come in here and just delete a few of them because uh, it takes up space on your phone. It'll speed it up. So you can see in here, you can just literally come in and delete uh, these active sessions and, and don't have to do it. But one of, the, one of the things I'd say when you are on one of these animals, and so if we're continuing, we've got this animal here, there's a few other things. You can click the eye and it'll bring up the information. So it'll tell you all of your regulatory information that goes with that, um, that sits on there. You also have, if you've medicated it, this little injection will pop up as a red uh, eye to tell you if it's in withdrawal. So if you've got, especially if you're sending to finish, like knowing if they're in withdrawal is quite important. Um, and then you've obviously got the breed and everything that goes there. The other one, which is quite often, is your days on farm, which will give you a good indication as you're starting to think about weaning and everything else as they come through. Um, so there's, there's a few other things that, that can go into that. Um, yeah. And that's, that's the main stuff around weighing. I think from our point of view, like the more you can capture this weight, the more you can start weaning on weight, you don't have to weigh as regularly actually with breeder as what you would with other stuff because of the predicted weights. You can actually sit on your phone and have a look at a pen and say, what is my average one? So, so can I set up where it says groups on that? Can I do yeah. individual pens? So you can do individual pens and actually, so what, then you'll start to see growth rates per pen as well, yeah, which I mean, you'll yeah. start to see where you've got dead spots in air and stuff yeah, like that. that. Like yeah. you'll, you'll see it by eye anyway, yeah. half the time, but anyway. So, so on the animals, you've got your animals, you've got your groups. When you think about groups and pens, groups are really your profit center. So if you've got a batch of animals that come on, it might be your February batch, you want to see how they've performed compared to your March batch or something like that. So you've been to market, you've got your profit. Don't move them out of those groups. Keep them in those groups because in a two years time, even though they've left the farm, they're still going to be in that group and we're going to be able to give you comparisons of how those groups performed. Then you've got your, your fields, which can be both a pen or a, a field. Um, set these up because, and then do draft them between these. Like tell them which pen it's in. So when you're in that pen, you can come into that pen. So yours are, you've got them all set up here in one of these holding pens. You can look at the flags against that pen. So in the morning, if there is any alerts that you've set for yourself, you can go to that pen and say, right, there's three I need to check up on in this pen. So rather than just looking at them, you're gonna look for those ear tags to say, right, I actually need to specifically have a look at these ones. And so, you know, one of the things you haven't done yet is obviously to do that, yeah. but if you so, can... So just clarify, that's where I'm going wrong there. So groups, Gr turns up, fields this shape, yeah. Yep, that's, that's your group, right? Yeah, this so whole, most likely this is batch one. Two, one two. Yeah, so you've got two groups, yeah, which are intake pen, batches. Then I would set up your pens, are your physical locations that your animals are sitting in. Right. And so, because they will leave that, because when they leave the farm, they're obviously not in a pen anymore. Yeah, yeah. So they're gone. But what that's really useful for is for you just daily to be able to go in and see radio and, you know, I'll create an alert on one of these animals, mate, and you can dismiss it later on. So, um, so with that, we'll say, we'll create an alert here. I'm gonna say this needs to have a treatment applied in two days time. Um, you're going to get a notification in two days yeah. time now, but anyway, you'll be all right. So, so now what you've got is you've got a flag in the top there um, of that group. But then when you go back to the, your pen, you'll be able to see in the top right, there's a flag. So you can look at that pen here, click on the flags. It tells you all the animals you need to check up on, on that day. So it just makes sure, especially with calf rearing, like if you're off doing work somewhere else and your wife's down checking them, she's automatically got the three that she needs to specifically look at and you're not leaving it to guesswork. 
So, um, so that sort of stuff is good just from a calf rearing perspective. If you want to, if you've got a Draxon that needs to be done in two days time because it's part of a course, gets that reminder in there as well. So, because all of these sort of stuff, and you know, what we notice with good calf rearers is they'll have one where they'll actually notice it. Like you'll see it before we will, before the weight gain. You'll just look at it and go, there's something just a bit funny about that one. I need to keep a check on that. And nine times out of 10, something's even worse in two days time. So, and, We're going to have limited access. They can still add alerts. They can still add vaccinations. They can yeah. still all of that stuff. They don't get to see like your marketing. They can't add users. They can't yeah. do all of that yeah. sort of stuff. But they, we, what we don't have is like a user who can't log anything at the moment because yeah. we assume they still are yeah. doing some treatments or yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. No, that's so. fine that she can log. I just don't want to have access to everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, so she, they definitely don't get access then to your trading and stuff like that so all the stuff you're doing with Chris and all of that sort of stuff all of that is you um, and it goes in yeah there's a worker permission that we can set them up as a worker different scales we've got a Gallagher yep so we do we do link with a few of the Gallagher's so send me the specific version I don't know it off the top of my head um, and go from there uh, obviously this one we've really pushed hard. Gallagher's releasing something similar to this later this year, actually, um, because to be honest, weigh scales for a piece of plastic in a box are way too expensive and it's about time we've got something that's a bit cheaper. And so we've actually supported True Test on this because it's about, if you want people to weigh, don't charge them two grand for a box. So, um, and that, what's nice about these is we can get them much cheaper and they do, they link much easier to the app as well. And they work with iPhone and Apple and Android, sorry, um, and go from there. Now, one of the things I would say, just because we're starting to get a bit of information from DEFRA now on what's happening with the identification program, is on your stick reader, if you do do EID, there is a need to start thinking about setting it up as digital two. So there's four different ways you can read a tag and digital two is what the DEFRA is gonna be moving towards. So they've not told anyone this, but we're going to start telling people because if they don't start doing it now, it's going to be a pain in the ass later on. So is that the type of chip or is that? It's not the type of chip. It's literally like every chip is ones and zeros. Yeah. And then they convert those ones and zeros into like digital, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Or they'll convert it into hexadecimal, which they have combination of letters. Or there's this other format called ISO, which is a pain in the ass. Yeah. Don't even get there. And then if you talk about Shearwell, they have their own way of reading it. So it's all the same chips but everyone needs to start moving to digital two so setup. Reader, so it's, it's, well it's how you set reader. up the reader, yeah. Right. So sheer well readers won't be set up as digital two then? They can be, they but can they be try and do it in their own way because then you can't ever change reader. So, which is like, anyway, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> I have an opinion of it and, uh, <laughs> but anyway, so that's, that's the main thing about the crush mode. I mean. Feedback's also welcome, like we're starting to think about how you can add condition score a bit easier in the app rather than having to, you can log it in here, but it's a couple of clicks. We're starting to think about how we do it in a much faster way. So Chris is doing a lot of that. Um, but you know, really the intention where we'd love to get to with the ID is you have that attached somewhere, probably not on the crate, but probably sitting over there. You only need to touch it when it's vaccinated. Every other time it will just keep flicking through the animals as it goes through. So. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, this isn't a true test one, works fine. You just got to type in the weight. So, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it just saves you having to get your hands dirty. You can handle the animal. There's a lot of different things that make it easier. So, and Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so we have the so yes, and we're not quite good enough yet. 